Sharon, let's start with you in Calgary. Why Halloween? Why hand out Bibles on October 31st? Well, um, we, we, we take October 31st to be a very good opportunity for Christians and for those who feel uncomfortable with Halloween uh, to spread the love of God, to spread the gospel on that night. Um, there are many Christians and even some non-Christians who don't feel comfortable with Halloween. And what we've seen over the years is that these people would often turn off their lights and go hide or just be very uh, reserved and quiet about it. But, you know, we see this as a very good opportunity because people are coming to our doors anyway. So, and I, I, I can give people what I feel is, is, is a more positive alternative to the gory images that Halloween comes with. Stephen, do you, do you have any issues with uh, finding a, a Bible in a child's tree thing? <laughs> uh, people of uh, uh, devout faith don't appreciate how much violence there is in the Bible. Uh, the Bible is filled with wars, decapitations, adultery, violence, uh, po uh, polygamy, and so on. And so while I understand why some people of faith would be offended by some of the violence around Halloween movies and even potentially some costumes. costumes. It's still the point that, that the, the Bible itself raises a lot of issues. Parents will react, some parents will react if they think a religious group is transforming what they see to be a secular holiday into a proselytizing opportunity. Elizabeth? Yeah, I agree with Stephen in that regard that it is proselytizing. Um, I think this. The, and, the and transformation. And when we say that, it, we mean we're, we're, it, it's a, a means of converting. Exactly, trying to convert people to a certain belief system. Um, I, I agree with him in that regard. I, I don't think it's offensive myself as a parent, um, but I also think it's probably a bit of a lost cause. I think probably most children won't look at it. I think probably parents will take uh, the Bible, Bible away, or maybe they'll let them have it if they want it. But I mean, the kids are looking for the sweets, and this, in my opinion, isn't, isn't the best opportunity or day to, to do this. So Sharon, if, if children are looking for sweets, uh, and, and say some parents do find the Bibles and, and they're offended, they throw them out, what do you say to that? Well, that's fine. Um, we say that it's important for kids and adults to know that there are alternatives, there are options. And, um, you know, one of the things we've, we've, we've said that is if, if it's okay for children to know about witches and ghosts and all the scary things, why is it not okay for kids to... Uh, know about God, you know, for them to at least have the information. And it's also very important for people to know that we're not out to convert people on that night. We're simply uh, giving people the opportunity to become exposed to that information, to know that, yes, Jesus loves them, God is alive, and that, you know, there are options. I think it's important to clarify, though, that Halloween isn't just a scary occasion. Um, there's this sort of vilification of it as being evil spirits and anti-Christian, and I don't think it necessarily is that, at least to most parents whose kids are going door to door. I mean, my kid, he's one, but he's a chicken. Um, another colleague of mine has a son who's going as a taco. I mean, these aren't scary things, and I think there's this kind of unnecessary um, making it extreme to kind of explain why they're doing it a certain other way. Do you see what I mean? To, to um, justify the, the bringing out of Bibles because we're supporting Satan or demons or whatever. And I don't think it is necessarily that. It's a community event and it's a creative event. It's, that's how I see it, you know? Sharon, uh, this is more than just Bibles. Uh, you, you encourage the children who do go out trick-or-treating uh, maybe don't wear scary costumes, a more, more neutral type approach. Why, why take that? Yes, because... Um we're not out to hijack Halloween, as people may, may make it seem. Uh, we encourage uh, positive uh, costumes if they feel they want to wear costumes. We, we are also giving out Christian tracts and other other Christian gifts. So it's not, um, in, you know, it's not a war. I mean, we're just saying, you know, uh, it, it's important for us to give, give kids and people uh, the, the information that of the gospel and, and that's what we're saying here. 
Uh, Stephen, scary costumes, is, is that a concern when a, when a, a child is young? Um, I understand why some parents would be, would be concerned about it. Um, from the other perspective, however, uh, Halloween is an interesting time to look at the history of how celebrations and holidays evolve. Uh, the, the roots of, of Halloween may go back to, uh, to pagan times in, in Scotland and, and Ireland. Certainly the early Christian church uh, adopted uh, uh, holidays around the same time in an attempt to take over the pagan holiday. This focus on, on ghosts and, and goblins is a way to go back and look at the history of previous times to examine the belief systems of, of people uh, who came before us. And Elizabeth, um, as, as a parent, you, you've identified you have a, a, a one-year-old. Would, mm -hmm. would you put uh, your child in a scary costume? Well, I, I don't think I'd put him in a scary costume now, um, but if he wants at some point down the road to dress up as something gory, I, I mean, I guess I haven't really thought that far ahead yet, but I don't think I have a problem with it. Certainly, I remember one year dressing up as a scary clown and another time as a ghost, whatever the costumes were, and there was no maliciousness behind it. It was, um, as Stephen was saying, you know, part of the history of the event, and it's fun for kids, you know? It's, it's just fun. I, it's so easy to take these sorts of things so seriously. All right, when we come back, is adding religion to Halloween an ironic twist on keeping Christmas inclusive? And is blending Bibles and chocolate bars an effective form of outreach? Tell us what you think. Follow the contact links at albertaprimetime.com. More of our panel in 60 seconds. Now I would say that's rather strange. That's not much of a treat. Halloween is for the kids, and I, I don't really quite agree that these other agendas should enter into it, but it's each person's individual decision. I'm sure the intentions are good, but I don't think it's a good idea to ever push a religion on someone impressionable as a child on Halloween. I don't think it's that bad, though. Yeah, you I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't like it if I got one, though. Not gonna lie. I think you can get floss and stuff at the dentist's office and Bibles at where it's appropriate, but Halloween night is trick or treat and that's candy. So some thoughts there from Albertans on the handing out of Bibles instead of Halloween candy. Uh, we've heard the campaigns that, uh, that want to take Christ out of, of the Christmas season, preferring neutral greetings like Happy Holidays. Uh, Jesus Ween uh, would appear to be adding Christ to Halloween. Elizabeth, is this a, a campaign reversal of, of what we see normally as December 25th and, uh, well, comes I upon us? I do see it certainly as a bit of a double standard. You know, I, I think most Christians, regardless of how um, strong their belief system is would think that it's a bit odd to be only allowed to say happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas. Um, but in this case, we're taking something that for the most part is considered secular and making it into something religious. So it seems like a bit of a contradiction to me. I, what do you think, Sharon? Is, do you see the contradiction maybe that uh, Elizabeth is speaking of? Well, I don't, I don't see it as a contradiction at all. Uh, all we're saying is if a Christian chooses to give out a Christian gift in addition to the candy on Halloween night, it's perfectly okay. And uh, in fact, we've heard of uh, Michelle Obama choosing to give out fruits, you know, instead of candy. You know, dentists give out toothbrushes and, and uh, toothpaste instead of candy. So we, we don't see anything wrong, and I don't think people should take it up offensive. You know, if you're given a, a gift, if you're given a Christian gift and you don't want it, just say, no thanks, you know. But it's important for people to know that there's an alternative, you know. Christians don't have to hide, they don't have to be quiet, you know, they can do something about it and give out, uh, you take that opportunity to reach out to their friends, to their neighbors about the love of Christ. Uh, Stephen, is adding religion to a day of costumes and, and kids having fun, is that appropriate in your estimation? Well, it's one thing to give out healthy food to, to children. It's another thing to add religion to a secular holiday in, in a country that's trying to be multicultural and respect each other's traditions. And part of that respect is knowing what boundaries exist in terms of, of spreading one's, one's word. And what's interesting as an academic about, about Halloween is you've got a societal reversal. You've got the weakest people of a population uh, making a, a symbolic threat to adults, trick or treat. And for this brief time, uh, kids get to be powerful. Um, 
kids get get to have some authority over adults, and it's all it's all confined in very with very clear rules and and uh, and norms. So there's a and it's also too the kids are they dress up like ghouls, but but the Halloween is a celebration of youth. Uh, we all face our mortality, and these costumes, in, in many ways, reflect what's going to happen to us all. But the the event itself is celebratory. Kids go to strangers' or neighbors' houses and get gifts just for being kids. So there's a whole other set of symbolisms that that sociologists see in a holiday uh, like like Halloween, uh, which is why uh, so many of us see it as a secular event. Hey, Sharon, do you see the the gift of a Bible as being directed to the to the child, or do you see it directed toward the parent? Is is a child old enough to understand the symbolism that goes with the Bible? Absolutely, um, and it's not only the Bible that we're given now. That's that's very important. We also have um, kid kid um, modified tracts, you know, for for kids, and and the Bibles for adults. You know, it's not to 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 think that you know everything that goes into that bag would only be looked at by the kid would be would be naive way of thinking, you know. So. Um, you know, we, we, we're giving this with the anticip anticipation that it will reach a kid, an adult, a parent, you know, a teenager, whoever, you know, that comes in contact with that, with that gift will get to know that, yes, uh, there's an alternative. You know, there are many people out there, they don't have any hope. They've never been exposed to, to the truth of the gospel. So we're taking this, we're using this as, as an opportunity to to, to let them know, you know. And if it's, if it's such, you know, a uh, uh, great thing, why are our school boards now saying, well, we don't want kids coming to school dressed up as ghosts and ghouls? So it means there's an issue, you know, and it's just so, so wonderful that, okay, the school boards are, are, are coming up with this at this time as well, you know. So there's an issue. And, um, you know, we're letting people know that, you know, life doesn't have to be so, it doesn't have to be uh, so negative. There, there shouldn't be one night dedicated to uh, a festival of the dead, you know. Jesus Ween is about celebration of life, you know, and that's what we're all about. Elizabeth, in, in terms of outreach, do you, do you see a, a way to connect? <clears throat> um, well, I, I, before, I just wanted to respond to Sharon's comment about it being a celebration of the dead. I mean, I see Halloween as one of the perfect examples of a celebration of life. Um, we've got young, happy kids going door to door, meeting their neighbors, seeing their um, parents, friends, whoever it is, getting to know their community. I mean, it's to me um, an excellent opportunity to connect with your city. And I would say for the most part, it is not a celebration of death. Um, I, I think Sharon's confusing the issues to some extent with regard to the, the gory costumes and the giving out of Bibles. Um, with regard to the giving out of Bibles, obviously people can give out whatever they want. My, my uh, friends and I were talking about how you can give out any book, um, but I, I think they're, uh, the supporters of Jesus Ween are a little bit over-optimistic that these Bibles are going to make their way into five-year-olds' hands and somehow spread the word and they're going to see the light. It's, it's just not realistic. Parents are going to dump the loot bag of candy onto the kitchen table, take Take out the things that the kids can't have, whether that's a homemade treat or an apple that might have something sinister in it, or a Bible that the kid, come on, this is not about children. It's manipulative of children. Um, you can obviously give it whatever you want, but I mean, I'd love if my kid got a Quran and the sutras as well. It's, it's just not realistic for, for children. Uh, in this period of uh, political uh, correctness, it's not surprising to me that some school boards are, are, are anxious backing about, away from the costumes. Yeah, uh, but still, they're not. I don't think backing away from Halloween itself. Uh, it, it's another thing, however, to uh, not see the the presence of of death in Christianity itself. I mean, arguably, uh, death is a central aspect and very gory death of Christianity's major figure. So there are issues about the content of the Bible that really aren't getting addressed in, in this larger conversation. Sharon? Well, um, my, uh, we're not here to, to address um, the issues of the Bible. Uh, it, it's, it, the Bible is, is it's the number one book in the world, no matter what anybody says. That's the truth, that's God's word. So, and I'm gonna leave it at that. 
But um, Jesus Weed is not about hijacking Halloween, and it's important for people to understand that. You know, we're not hijacking Halloween, we're not replacing Halloween. We're just saying, well, take that opportunity to spread the love of God's, God's word, you know, spell, spread, the, spread God's word, you know. So um, that's, that's, and, and that's, that's it. <laughs> All right. So, so maybe a final thought, Elizabeth? Yeah, I guess I just, I would be curious to know how Sharon would feel if she got um, things in her child's loot bag. I don't know if you have children, Sharon. Um, but if, she, yeah, if, if you got things in your loot bag for your kids that were maybe attitudes and beliefs that you didn't agree with, I mean, maybe you'd be open to those things as well. I don't know. Um, obviously, you can give out whatever you want on Halloween, if it's pencils or if it's erasers or if it's Bibles or if it's raisins or candy, whatever. Um, I just think it's, it is, to some extent, um, taking over something that is largely a celebration for children. Stephen, a final thought? Uh, probably nobody would uh, object if, uh, if Christians uh, pull their, their kids into uh, community celebrations this evening. Uh, when, however, um, kids come into the door who are outside of the Christian community, uh, knock on the door and get a Bible in addition to candy, then a whole other series of issues come forward. Probably my guess is that kind of uh, spreading the word won't go over well with a lot of parents and probably a lot of kids too. And, and Sharon, if it, if it doesn't go over well, that's, that's okay by you? Well, that's fine. At least you 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 got it right. <laughs> you know, we're not saying we're not we're not saying oh we see the whole world converting in one night. You know, we're not we're not saying that. All we're saying is, I've 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 done my part. I'm giving you know my neighbors an, an opportunity to know about God, and and that's it. It's it's simple. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, we very much appreciate all three perspectives this evening. Thank you kindly. Uh, Stephen Kent is a professor of uh, sociology and religious studies at the University of Alberta. Elizabeth Withy writes a parenting column for the Edmonton Journal. And in Calgary this evening, Sharon Ogan, a spokesperson for the Jesus Ween Christian Festival.